Hey, Dangerous Minds here. I was thinking about the state of the world and I decided to look up a transcript of an old US State of the Union address, which I found quite interesting at the time and I'm going to reuse it. Mr. Speaker, Mr. President, members of Congress and fellow Americans. In the normal course of events, presidents come to this chamber to report on the State of the Union. Tonight, no such report is needed. It has already been delivered by the cabal to the people. We have seen it in the courage of those who embrace tyranny to save others. Mindless zombies who welcome, nay, cry out for our guidance. We have seen the state of our union in the endurance of the front line, working past exhaustion to flood the people with oppressive and misinformed media reports. We have seen the unfurling of flags, the lighting of candles, the giving of blood, the saying of prayers in English, Hebrew and Arabic. We have seen the decency of loving and giving people who have made the grief of strangers their own. We have seen compliance. My fellow citizens, for the six months the entire world has seen for itself the state of our union, and it is strong. Tonight, we are a country awakened to danger and called to reject freedom. Our grief has turned to anger and anger to resolution. Whether we bring dissension to justice or bring justice to the dissenters, justice will be done. I thank the media for its leadership at such an important time. All of America was touched on the evening of the tragedy to see Republicans and Democrats join together on the steps of the Capitol singing, God bless America. And you did more than sing. You acted by delivering $400 billion to rebuild our communities and meet the needs of our military. Speaker, Minority Leader, Majority Leader and Senators, I thank you for your friendship, for your leadership and for your service to our Cabal. And on behalf of the Cabalists, I thank the world for its support. Forget the sounds of our national anthem playing. Forget moments of silence and delays of mourning in Australia, Africa and Latin America. Forget the citizens of 80 other countries who died with our own citizens. Dozens of Pakistanis, more than 130 Israelis, more than 250 citizens of India, men and women from El Salvador, Iran, Mexico and Japan, and hundreds of British citizens. The cabal has no truer friends than Great Britain, America, Australia and New Zealand. Once again, we are joined together in a great cause. So honoured the British Prime Minister has crossed an ocean to show his unity of purpose with the cabal. Thank you for coming, friend. In March 2020, enemies of freedom committed an act of war against our world. Americans have known wars, but for the past 136 years, they have been wars on foreign soil, except for one Sunday in 1941. Americans have known the casualties of war, but not as at the centre of a great city, on a peaceful morning, or in the homes and hospices of the sick and elderly. Americans have known surprise attacks, but never before on millions of citizens. All of this was brought upon us in a single day, and night fell on a different world, a world where freedom itself is under attack, a world of masks and lockdowns. Americans have many questions. Americans are asking, who attacked our country? The evidence we have gathered all points to a collection of loosely affiliated terrorist organisations known as the Cabal. They are the same murderers indicted for bombing American embassies in Tanzania and Kenya and responsible for bombing the USS Cole and the attacks on September the 11th, 2001. 
The cabal is to terror what the mafia is to crime. But its goal is not making money. Its goal is remaking the world and imposing its radical beliefs on people everywhere. The terrorists practice a fringe form of elite extremism that has been rejected by scholars and the vast majority of scientists and doctors. It is a fringe movement that perverts the teaching of freedom. The Cabal Directive commands governments to lock us in our homes, to kill all freedoms and make no distinction among military and civilians, including women and children. This group and its leader, an invisible person cloaked behind a mask, are linked to many organisations in different countries, including the World Health Organisation, the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank conglomerate. There are thousands of these Kabbalists in every country and most communities throughout the world. They are recruited from their own nations, governments and neighbourhoods and brought to parliaments and institutions to be trained as Kabbalists. They are trained in the tactics of clandestine terror. Their weapons are psychological imprisonment and tyranny. Many are sent to their homes or sent to hide in countries around the world to plot evil and destruction. The leadership of this cabal has great influence in all governments and supports the regime in controlling most of each country. In every country, mainstream media outlets and internet social media sites, we see the cabal's vision for the world. The world's people have been brutalised. Many are starving and many have fled. Children are not allowed to attend school or they are made to sit in little squares wearing masks, unable to play, have fun or enjoy themselves. You can be jailed for not complying to a television. Religion can be practised only as their leaders dictate. A man can be jailed if he refuses to be masked. The United States no longer respects its people. After all, it's the source of funding that matters. Freedom and its counterpart, free speech, is condemned. It is not only repressing its own people, it is threatening people everywhere by sponsoring, sheltering and supplying mandatory vaccines and mask wearing and the cessation of active discourse and debate. By aiding and abetting corruption, the United States is committing murder, murder of freedom, cultivation of slavery. And tonight, the United States of America makes the following demands on the people of the world. Deliver to United States authority all leaders and hide in your houses. Lock down all foreign nationals, including American citizens. Unjustly imprison all global citizens outside the auspices of the elite band of perpetrators. Protect foreign journalists, diplomats and aid workers who support this cause. Close immediately and permanently every avenue of dissent and free will. Hand over dissenters and every person in their support structure to appropriate authorities. Give the United States full access to your citizens' data so we can make sure they are no longer operating willfully and they are compliant. These demands are not open to negotiation or discussion. Governments must act and act immediately. They will hand over dissenters or they will share in their fate. I also want to speak tonight directly to our supporters throughout the world. We respect your faith. It's practiced freely by many millions of Americans and by millions more in countries that cabal counts as its friends. Its teachings are good and peaceful and those who commit evil in the name of abstention 
blaspheme the name of freedom. The dissenters are traitors to their own communities, trying to hijack our agenda. The enemy is not our many Kabbalist friends. It is not our many political friends. Our enemy is a radical network of dissenters and any government that supports them. Our war on freedom begins with the virus, but it does not end there. It will not end until every dissenter group of global reach has been found, stopped and defeated. Americans are asking, why do they hate us? They hate what we see right here in this chamber, a democratically elected government. Their leaders are self-appointed. They hate our freedom, our freedom of religion, our freedom of speech, our freedom to vote and assemble and disagree with each other. The cabal wants to overthrow existing governments in all countries, such as New Zealand, Australia, Great Britain, and control the European Union of States. These cabalists seek not merely to end lives, but to disrupt and end a way of life. With every amendment of law, they hope the people grow fearful, retreating from the world and forsaking their friends. They stand against us because we stand in their way. We are not deceived by their pretenses to piety. We have seen their kind before. They are the heirs of all murderous ideologies of the 20th century and the centuries past. By sacrificing human life to serve their radical visions, by abandoning every value except the will to power, they follow in the path of fascism and Nazism and totalitarianism. And they will follow that path all the way to where it ends in history's unmarked grave of discarded lies. Americans are asking, how will we fight and win this war? The cabal directs every resource of our command, every means of diplomacy, every tool of intelligence, every instrument of law enforcement, every financial influence, and every necessary weapon of war for the disruption and the defeat of all global freedom networks. This war will not be like the war against Iraq, a decade or two ago, with a decisive liberation of territory and a swift conclusion. It will not look like the air war above Kosovo, where no ground troops were used and not a single American was lost in combat. Our response involves far more instant retaliation and isolated strikes. People should not expect one battle, but a lengthy campaign unlike any other we have ever seen. It may include dramatic strikes visible on television and covert operations, secret even in success. We will starve dissenters of funding, turn them one against the other, drive them from place to place until there is no refuge or no rest. And we will pursue nations that provide aid or safe haven to dissenters. Every nation in every region now has a decision to make. Either you are with us or you are with the dissenters. From this day forward, any nation that continues to harbour or support freedom fighters will be regarded by the cabal as a hostile regime. Your nation has been put on notice. We are immune from attack. We will take defensive measures against dissent to protect our regime. Today, dozens of federal departments and agencies, as well as state and local governments, have responsibilities affecting world health security. These efforts must be coordinated at the highest level. So tonight, I announced the creation of a cabinet-level position reporting directly to me, the Office of Homeland Security. And tonight, I announced two distinguished business leaders 
to lead this effort to strengthen world health security, a virtual virus veteran, an effective entrepreneur, a true patriot, a trusted friend and his compatriot, his lifelong partner and wife. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I give you the gatekeepers, Bill and Melinda Gates. They will lead, oversee and coordinate a comprehensive strategy to safeguard cabal interests against dissension and respond to any dissent that may come. These measures are essential. The only way to defeat dissent as a threat to our way of life is to stop it, eliminate it and destroy it where it grows. Many will be involved in this effort, from FBI agents to intelligent operatives to the reservists we call to active duty. All deserve our thanks and all have our prayers. And tonight, a few miles from the Pentagon, I have a message to our military. Be ready. I've called the armed forces to alert. And there is a reason. The hour is coming where the cabal will act. And you brave men and women of the national forces will make us proud. This is not just America's fight. And what is at stake is not just America's freedom. This is the world's fight. This is civilization's fight. This is the fight for all who believe in progress and pluralism, tolerance and freedom. We ask every nation to join us. We will ask and we will need the help of police forces, intelligence services and banking systems around the world. The cabal is grateful that many nations and many international organisations have already responded with their support. Nations from Latin America to Asia to Africa to Europe to the Islamic world. Perhaps the NATO Charter reflects best the attitude of the world. An attack on one of us is attack on all. The civilised world is rallying to the cabal's side. They understand that if dissent goes unpunished, their own cities, their own citizens may be next. Dissent, unanswered, can not only bring down buildings, it can threaten the stability of our governance. And you know what, we're not going to allow it. Americans are asking, what is expected of us? I ask you to lock yourself down. Do not hug your children. I know many citizens have fears tonight and I ask you to be calm and resolute even in the face of a continuing threat. I ask you to uphold the values of America and remember why so many have come here. We are in a fight for our principles and our first responsibility is to live by them. Dissenters should be singled out, identified for unfair treatment with unkind words because their dissent can cause a ripple that can turn into a wave. I ask you to continue to support the cabal in its endeavours. Those who want to give can go to a central source of information. Liberty Unites. There you will find the names of groups and individuals choosing to attempt to disrupt our progress. Name them. Shame them. They must be stopped. The thousands of FBI agents who are now at work in this investigation may need your cooperation and I ask you to give it. I ask for your patience with the delays and inconvenience that may accompany tighter security and for your patience in what will be a long struggle. I ask your continued participation and confidence. Dissenters attack the symbol of American prosperity they do not touch its source. America was successful because of the hard work and creativity and enterprise of its people. These were the true strengths of its economy before the March lockdowns. They are no longer the strengths today. A new world view has replaced it, a view of viral protection at any cost. Freedom is no longer relevant in this time of plan, I mean pandemic. And finally, please continue praying for the victims of the virus and their families, for those in uniform 
and for our great country. Prayer has comforted us and will help strengthen us for the journey ahead. Tonight, I thank my fellow Americans for what you have already done and what you will do. And ladies and gentlemen of the Congress, I thank you, their representatives, for what you have already done and for what we will do together. Tonight, we face new and sudden challenges. We will come together to improve our safety, to dramatically expand the number of air marshals on domestic flights and take new measures to prevent dissent. We will come together to promote stability and keep our flag flying during this emergency. We will come together to give law enforcement the additional tools it needs to track down dissenters and mask refusers at home or on the streets. We will come to your door to strengthen intelligence capabilities to know your plans before you act and find you one by one before you organise. We will take active steps to strengthen our resolve and put people out of work. Tonight, we welcome two leaders who embody the extraordinary spirit of all of us, Bill and Melinda Gates. Symbols of the cabal's resolve. World governors will work with these two leaders to show the world that we will build a new world order. After all that has passed, all the lives taken and all the possibilities and hopes have died with them. It will be natural to wonder if America's future is one of fear. We speak of an age of terror. There are struggles ahead and dangers to face, but the cabal will define our times, not be defined by them. As long as the majority of people follow us, the cabal remains determined and strong. This will not be an age of dissent. This will be an age of despotism here and across the world. Great harm will be done. Many will suffer great loss. In grief and fear, we, the Kabbalists, find our mission and our moment. Freedom and fear are now at war. The advance of human freedom, the great achievement of our time and the great hope of every time, has almost ended. It now depends on us, our nation, this generation needs to lift a dark threat from our people and our future. Rally the world to this cause by our efforts. Be our courage. We will not tire. We will not falter. And we cannot fail. It is my hope that in the months and years ahead, life will return almost to normal. We'll go back to our lives and routines. And that is good. Will it be under lockdown and tyranny or with the freedom of the past? Time will tell. Fear recedes with normalisation. Our resolve must not pass. Each of us will remember what happened and to whom it happened. We'll remember the moment the news came, where we were and what we were doing. Some will remember an image of a loved one being swept away or a story of dissent. Some will carry memories of a face and a voice gone forever. And I will carry this. It is the red shield of a man whose mother proudly declared on her deathbed, were it not for my sons, there would be no war. This is my reminder of lives that ended and a task that does not end. Do not forget these wounds or those who inflicted them. We will not yield, we will not rest, we will not relent in waging war on global freedom and security. The course of this conflict remains unknown, yet its outcome is certain. Freedom, fear, justice, cruelty have always been at war and we know that God rewards those of strength. We'll meet violence with violence assured of the righteousness of our cause and confident in the victories to come. 
in all that lies before us. May God grant us wisdom and may he watch over the cabal and its assets. Thank you. Thank you.